So feet hip width apart, parallel to each other, sitting bones down, ribs in and up, shoulders relax. And reach your crown to the ceiling. Let the belly move as you breathe so that diaphragm drops and displaces everything, letting the lungs expand fully. And as you exhale, just let everything release. Toxins, tension, everything going. Close your eyes if you want. You can focus inward, just getting that breathing going and that yoga perspective focused. And then as you inhale, bring your arms out to shoulder level. Shoulders down, crown high. Exhale, hands to your heart, elbows back. Stretch out to the front, shoulders still down. And exhale, hands behind you. Clasp your fingertips and lift your heart. As you exhale, pivot on over and come into your forward bend. So just as deep as you like to go for the first thing. Chin in so that your neck gets a little stretch. Lift your sitting bones and stretch the hamstrings along the back of your legs. Hands toward your head, getting those shoulders getting a little of work. And then knees soft, lift your ribs, sitting bones down, keep the chin in as you wind your way up. Unwind the spine and come up into the heart for the back bend. So chest lifting high, shoulders, shoulder blades down, head reaching back. And then inhale up, release your arms, and just take a moment feeling the circulation and how you're starting to warm up. And again, inhaling, bring your arms stretching out, hands to your heart, elbows a little back so you keep that chest nice and open. Inhale to the front, keep the shoulders down. And hands behind you, coming into that opposite finger clasp. And heart high, stretch into the back bend and pivot over and relax. So just deepen as much or as little as your body likes this session and bring your hands up toward your head. And again, inhaling, work your way all the way back to standing. And again, into that upper body back bend, let your shoulders relax, stretch your spine open. And then inhale to the top, release your arms and take a moment just feeling your circulation again, maybe increasing a bit. And inhale. Arms to the sides, palms toward the ceiling this time, and over your shoulders. Hands past each other, turn them around to clasp, and bring your arms next to your ears. Shoulders, shoulder blades down, sitting bones down. Keep the body nice and straight to the front as you lean to the side in that lateral motion for your spine. Push the foot you're leaning away from down for a little extra stretch through the ribs, through the spine. Put your arms around, other hand in front. And again, arms by your ears, sitting bones, shoulder blades down, crown high as you lean without twisting, and open the ribs. Push the foot down, maximize along the oblique on that side of your body. And again, when you're ready, inhale back up, and exhale, arms to your sides in mountain pose. Take a moment, feel your spine, notice your body. And we'll inhale the arms up, palms toward the ceiling, over your shoulders. Again, shoulder blades down, hands clasping at the elbows. Arms along your ears as much as you can and keep them there. And again, lengthen your spine. So sitting bones toward the floor, crown high, open the spine for the twist. And as you get into your twist, lengthen again, breathing in, and pivot over as you exhale. So just hang there and relax. Keep your arms as close to your ears as possible. 
keep the weight on both feet as evenly as you can, even though you're leaning to one side. And then slowly work your way up and lift your heart. Pull your elbows back, look toward the ceiling, and keep again the shoulders and shoulder blades down. And then inhaling, come up, exhale to the center. Lengthen again, breathing in, switch your arms around, and exhale. Time and pop it over as you exhale. So come again deep into that forward bend as much or as little as your body would like. Keep the weight up to both feet evenly. And relax through the whole upper body, letting things lengthen in your spine. And again, while you just did, keep your breath deep and full as you come back up into that upper body for the back bend. Remembering always be gentle on your low back while you're twisting. And then inhale upright, exhale to the center. And bring your arms up, shoulders down, a left swan dive. So palms toward the floor, pivot forward at the hip joint, and keep your body flat, parallel to the floor. So as you're in this position, think about the sitting bones going back, the ribs coming toward your spine and up toward your heart, and the chest maybe a little bit more toward the floor. So that whole spine is nice and straight. Chin tucked in a little bit for your neck. Arms straight out from your shoulders, not back toward your hips or over toward your head. And then just drop into ragdoll. You can bend your knees a little if you want, or you can straighten them and get that hamstring stretch. And if you like the stretch through your lower back, you can bring your arms behind your legs and pull in a little bit more, which will kind of give you a little bit more through that sacrum lumbar region. And then release your arms back to the front. And one more time, just slowly wind your way back into mountain pose. And as you get to mountain pose, just take a moment feeling your spine all stimulated and energized and ready to work today. So hands to your heart. Keep your elbows in. Look at your hands and bring them up as you inhale. Chest high, lengthen through your spine. Pull your elbows, not your elbows, your hands back. Well, your elbows too. And lift your heart maybe a little higher. So again, upper body back bend, really opening across the heart. And then exhaling, follow your hands. Remember, yoga is the process, not the destination and drop down into ragdoll. Tuck in your chin, lift those sitting bones, bring your hands up on your shins under your knees. So legs are straight, elbows are straight, spine is straight. Get everything lengthening, breathe, and exhale back down. And again, just wind your way back to standing and relax. So again, hands, on your back with the heel of your palm right about shoulder, lower shoulder blade, fingertips down toward your lower back. And then pull your elbows as toward each other as you can make them so you're really expanding across the heart. So as you're doing that, if that's a challenge, you can put a belt or strap around your elbows and tighten it till they pull toward each other which gives a little bit more opening across the upper body at the front. So shoulder blades toward your waist and just look up and allow your body to come into that upper body again for that back bend. We do so much forward bending all day. We need to really focus on opening the heart. Keep breathing, keep lengthening your spine. And then inhaling, Come upright, chin toward your chest, arms back into mountain pose. Just take a moment, feel the circulation, and allow yourself to breathe. So if you do have a chair, 
we can do something similar with the chair, a couple of things similar. So put your chair in front of you. And our first one will be a little standing practice. And you can do this at the wall if you don't have a chair. So you want to hold on to the back of the chair and take a good step back so your arms can straighten. And then you want to push your hips over your ankles so that your whole body is pretty much parallel to the floor. And then you're going to drop down through the heart, through the chest, until your ears come next to your shoulders. And you're letting, again, that upper body come a little bit into the back then. So keep lifting up through the ribs, letting that lower back have good support as you come into the upper body for the back then. So if you're at the wall instead, you want your hands a little bit above your head so that you can do that same upper body sinking motion. So just keep pushing back through the sitting bones, kind of lift the kneecaps, tighten the front of the quads so that the back of the hamstrings can get a good stretch without overdoing it. And just keep dropping, dropping, dropping through the armpit, upper chest area. As those shoulder blades go towards your waist, the ribs come up, support your spine at the lower back. Keep breathing and of course every exhalation just lets you go maybe a little deeper. And then to release, tuck in your chin, bend your knees, and walk back toward the wall or the chair and stand upright. And just kind of feel all that circulation through the upper body. And then, do you have a chair? I can't tell. Okay, so sit on your chair. I'll turn sideways, it might be easier to see. So sit on your chair so that your lower back is maybe at the bottom of the back of the chair, but you don't want your whole back on the chair unless it's like straight up. And then get into your sitting bones. You want your ankles right under your knees and the toes straight ahead. And you want your whole body stacked in mountain pose position. So the bottom ribs in and up, chest nice and open, and everything straight, just like your mountain pose positioning. Then we're going to take the hands, clasp them behind you, and this is just similar to what we did standing up. So the fingertips together, interlaced. If you want a little bit more opening across the heart, you can pull the heels of your palms together. Some people find that irritates their shoulders, so don't do it if that happens. And then just pull your whole back against the back of the chair and lift your heart looking up and push your head toward whatever's behind you. Tuck your chin back in a little bit so you're not crunching the neck too much and just open through that upper body. So if your chair back is right at the shoulder blade area, this is really a good positioning. If you're a little higher than that, it can be a little bit more challenging. So it just depends on where your chair is hitting you across the back, <clears throat> how much support you get into that upper body back then at which point along your spine. So just kind of notice where that is. And then to release, chin toward your chest and release your hands back to your lap and sit back upright. And again, feel the circulation. Notice, make sure your shoulders don't roll forward just right above your hips. And of course, we're gonna balance the body doing it the opposite way. So opposite hand clasp, whatever is your initial position, Shift the fingers one position over. So again, hands behind you, clasp the fingers, pull the spine against the back of the chair, then lift the heart, coming into that upper body back bend wherever that top of your chair hits across your back. So it may be really high, it may be shoulder blade level, whichever it is, don't worry about it, just notice where it is. And again, chin towards your chest a little bit, Lengthen through the top of your head, making sure that neck doesn't crunch as much as if it's just flopping back. So spine long, chest lifting, push the hands as far down as they want to go. 
And to release, chin toward your chest, hands to your lap, and sit back up again. Seated position, kind of 90 degree angles. Bending at the hip joint, bending at the knees, bending at the ankles. I'm just turning around so I can face and see what's going on here. So as you come into your seated position on the chair, you can slide a little bit more toward the front of the chair. We're going to have the ankles under the knees and the toes straight ahead. So everything you do in yoga, everything lines up just like mountain pose, essentially. You want the hip bones, kneecaps, ankles and toes everything lined up even when they have those 90 degree bends in them shoulders down and ribs in and up keeping that support through the spine so we're going to bring one foot forward straighten the knee as much as you can so you may need to slide forward till those sitting bones are at the edge of the chair so think about the kneecap on that extended leg coming up toward your thigh and the front of your thigh tightening so that the back of the leg gets a good stretch. Keep pushing out through the whole bottom of your foot so the heel and the base of the toes all push away. And then we're going to lift that leg. See if you can lift it till it's parallel to the other leg. So this works the abs and the hip flexor. So allow it to go wherever it's appropriate for you make sure your upper body is still just upright and you're pushing out through the bottom of the leg so that you're activating that whole leg if this is good at parallel to your other thigh you can lift that leg a little higher which will engage the abdominals and the hip flexor a little bit more they work together so allow that to happen as much or as little as you need to. You don't have to lift it too high. And then exhale and put that foot down and relax a moment. So breathing, just realigning everything. Shoulder blades down, spine straight, supported by that core that you've activated, ribs in and up. So of course, balancing other leg. So bring the foot out, flex the foot, get that knee, kneecap up, tightening the front of the quad so that the hamstring gets a good stretch along the back of your leg. And when you're ready, just lift it parallel to the other thigh, pushing out through the bottom of your foot, up through the crown, don't forget that, sitting bones down, crown high, and allowing that whole leg to activate. And again, maximize or minimize. It doesn't have to go parallel if that's not something your body is willing to do. Remember, personal practice. Do what's right for your body. And if it seems right on this side, you can again lift that leg a little higher. It's going to activate more through the legs, through the core. Notice what your body is doing. That's the yoga perspective is to do what's right for you. And when you're ready to release, just again, reposition it back down. So take a moment there, feel the core, feel the legs, notice your positioning, make sure things are again aligned and you're allowing your breath to be full and deep. So we're going to do something that you can also do on the floor. We're gonna bring one foot up and cross it at the top of the other knee. So the ankle is above the knee. And the first thing we're going to do is just let this knee come down as much as it wants because this is um, going to open the hip a little bit more. So just breathe and relax. It doesn't have to go far. And the only thing you need to do is allow it to be in whatever is a comfortable position for your hip. So don't push it down, don't, don't stress and strain it, you just wanna let it relax. And then we're gonna hold the foot, ankle, and the knee, just positioning your hands there, basically not really doing anything with them. The pivot is at the top of the thigh, at the um, hip joint. And again, the ribs are in and up, and we're just gonna pivot forward and get a little bit more intensity through that hip and allow the core to work a little bit more as well. 
So just breathe, maximize or minimize. So you want to keep the spine as straight as you can. So you're leading with the heart and the chin, not tipping your forehead toward your leg. One of the things that I find really irritating in a lot of the pictures and descriptions of yoga poses is that they tip the chin in and they bring the forehead toward the leg in, in many poses. And that really kind of defeats a lot of the purpose of how the position is supposed to be. You're not supposed to be getting that spine out of alignment as much as they often do. And then keeping the spine nice and straight, pivot back up. You can bring that whole leg up a little bit and move it around for that hip rotator a little bit more. And then release the foot. And again, check your positioning, knees under the ankles under the knees, everything lined up from the hip joint straight out and spine straight, ribs in, core active, bring that other foot up. So again, just position it as much or as little into that cross-legged position and let the knee come down as much or as little as it wants to. And again, keep the core of focus. You want to make sure that that is supporting your spine. You want the spine to stay straight through the whole process. And again, just allowing the knee to come down as much or as little as you want. Put a hand on the knee and the other one on the foot or ankle. Pivot at the hip joint, bringing your chest and chin forward. And again, as far toward that leg as your body wants to go. So you'll feel it in the hip joint. You'll feel it in the core a little bit. Just Allow yourself to go wherever your body needs to go, and then relax. Keep lengthening out through the top of your head. Keep the shoulder blades always toward your waist, and just pivot as much or as little into that forward bend as you choose. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe it's because people say forward bend. It's forward pivot, not bend. So you're not tucking in your chin, you're not bringing your head toward your leg, you're bringing your heart, your chest, into the position. Keep breathing, maximize or minimize, remember, personal practice. And then inhaling, come back, keeping your body nice and straight all the way up. And again, if you wanna lift the leg and get a little bit more hip rotation, you can do that as well. And back into your position. Okay, so you want the ankles right under your knees. Hips, knees, ankles, toes straight ahead. This is important because we're going to go into chair pose. So shoulders, shoulder blades down and bring your arms out. You can have the palms toward each other or you can um, put them down toward the floor, whatever is more comfortable for you. And we're going to just lift the sitting bones off the chair. So a lot of work through the quads. This is, again, back straight, everything just aligned. And inhale up into mountain pose, arms at your side. So yeah, usually they have you come into chair pose from the standing position, but I think it's a whole lot more effective doing it up from the chair. And I have an 85-year-old lady that's been in my class, and she finds that this really helps her to maintain her strength so that she can actually get up out of those more cushiony chairs as well. Oh, and let's do a balance practice with our chair. So for balance, the thing that most people don't do <clears throat> that makes it much easier if you do do it is rotate in at the top of the thigh so that you keep the hip bone, knee, ankle, and toes lined up with your shoulder. So if you do that, it's going to be able to position over that arch and the bottom of your foot more effectively. So just have the chair at your side. You can keep your hand on the chair if you feel balanced challenged, or you don't even have to use the chair. You can just use it for positioning or the edge of your mat for positioning. So you want the outside of your foot parallel to the chair or the end of the mat, whichever you're using. That's that inner rotation 
that gets your leg positioned so that the knee goes in the direction of your toes if you would bend it and then straighten it. So kneecap up, quad tightening for support through the whole back of your leg and the bottom of your foot. So you can pick up the toes, get the base of the toes connected, and then spread the toes out as you put them down. No gripping. That lifts the base of the toes, gives you less support. I had a 75-year-old student at one point that helped me learn that because she kept going, why can't I get this? I'm really gripping with my toes. Don't grip. That throws you off. So get the whole base of the toes and heel down, arch lifting the whole bottom of your foot, really supporting you. Everything stacked through the whole side of your body that's grounded. And then the other foot comes up just a little if you're balance challenged or parallel to the floor or in toward your heart. So you can hold on to your leg or you can hold on to the chair, your choice. So as you do that, rotate this Stand this lifted leg in also from the top of the thigh so that your knee is coming to the front and you're not shifting that heel over toward your knee because that throws your, your alignment out of alignment. So you want to be lifting it as straight as you can. And then whether it's up or down, we're going to circle the ankle because as we get older, we need the ankles to remain flexible. And then circle them the other way making sure that you're getting that whole rotation through the ankle, and then push the heel out, push the toes out, flexing and pointing a few times. And release back to mountain. And then if you're using the chair, the chair goes to the opposite side. The side that you're grounding into is the one next to the chair. So again, arrange that inner rotation, get that alignment, knee, right over the ankle with the hip joint right above it, shoulder right above that. Everything stacked for support. Always the core is working to support that lower back. So ribs in and up, keeping that core active throughout your balance practice. Get the base of the toes down, get the whole foot grounded, toes spread out, not gripping. And again, sink into that foot up through the spine and hold on if you want or not. Bring that other leg up. So keep it rolling in so that as it comes up, it's nice and straight. And again, go as high as you want. You can wrap your arms and pull it in even closer if that works, or you can just leave it near the floor. And again, when you're ready, work your ankle so that you're making sure that you maintain flexibility through the whole joint. And reverse the direction the opposite way letting it get a good circular motion. And then stop and push the heel away, push the toes away in that flex and point motion. And release when you're ready. And just get back into your mountain pose and allow yourself to feel the groundedness beneath you. And we'll go ahead and release our chair for today and allow ourselves to return to mountain pose. So just take a moment there, feel the connection into your feet, up through your spine, feel the hips a little bit more open maybe, core a little bit more active. And then inhale up and exhale over and come to child's pose onto the mat. Hands, palms up, forehead toward the floor, and just a little transition onto the surface beneath you. Breathe deep, exhale and release. And then inhaling, sit up. We're gonna bring the legs to the front of the mat. And again, reconnect into your sitting bones. Get everything nice and aligned. Kneecaps toward your thighs. Heels, toes pushing out, ribs in and up, get that core active, use it for support as you slowly lower your body onto the floor. So kind of unwind the spine, each movement as you come all the way to the mat. And just take a moment on the mat to position and get comfortable, kind of move back and forth on that lower back releasing anything that might be tense or tight. 
We're going to slide the sitting bones a little bit more toward the heel so that sacrum lower back gets more connected. And then bend your knees, heels right near your sitting bones, and knees straight up. So always a little inner rotation helps to keep that alignment. So keep pushing the sitting bones a little bit more toward the heels to get your back connected. And we're going to bring the arms to T position. You can have them palms up or down, your choice. Palms down is a little bit more stabilizing through the shoulders. Palms up keeps the shoulders a little bit more open. So either way works. So keep the lower back connected. We're going to cross the right leg over the left leg like you're sitting in a chair and crossing your legs. And then we're going to exhale, roll the knees to one side and turn looking toward the opposite arm. So as you come into that position, if your knee doesn't go all the way down, don't worry. This is pretty intense in that lower back. <clears throat> so if it's too intense for your body, make sure that you go ahead and put some padding under it or just drop that foot to the floor for some support. If it goes all the way to the floor, that's fine. That's just going to put your lower back into more of a twist. Keep your shoulders and shoulder blades down, middle back twist, and keep turning your head upper back, neck and shoulder twist. So remember twists, especially our personal practice, what's right for you is what's appropriate. Don't go too far for your lower back or your neck or any part of your body. And as always with a twist, you want to be relaxing into it, just allowing the exhalations to release the ligaments along the spine perhaps letting you deepen the twist a little bit more. I end with twists every time because they help align and balance your spine as well as your energy. So just go as deep or as not deep as you and your body need. And when you're ready to release, just roll onto your back and uncross that leg and reposition. Feel the circulation through your spine, through your body, a little bit more intense after a twist. And again, we're going to balance the body to the opposite side. So go ahead and cross that other leg over. Take a breath, and as you exhale, roll the knees to the opposite side. Turn your head to whatever's behind you. And again, the knee may come to the floor or it may not. Just allow it to go only as far as it needs to. You can put that foot on the floor for support if you need to, or actually put a pillow or block under the knee if you'd like it to be supported more. Once more, just breathe. Exhaling, letting things release. Shoulders and shoulder blades down to the mat. Releasing that middle back twist. Turning your head, upper back twist. And just allow the knee to come as far toward the mat, toward the floor, as it needs for your lower back twist. And just notice one side may be easier, one side may be more challenging. And twists, like pretty much all yoga poses, that's not unusual to have one side easier, one side more challenging. So go ahead and breathe. Relax and maximize or minimize, it's up to you what your body needs this morning, afternoon, whatever time it is. Deep breath, one more release. And whenever you're ready, go ahead and roll onto your back, uncrossing your legs, repositioning, and moving into your relaxation posture. So go ahead and let that inner rotation of the thighs keep the toes up toward the ceiling or let them move a little apart if that's more comfortable for your relaxation. You can again slide the sitting bones toward your heels for a little more sacrum low back connection. Shoulder blades toward your waist, bringing your shoulders down. Again, opening a little more across the heart with the palms up, allowing that upper body to open and relax. Deep breaths. 
just allowing that lower back to have whatever natural curve is comfortable. You can have your chin a little toward your chest and stretch the back of your neck if that's something that's good for your body in this position. You can keep your knees bent if your lower back feels too strained and stressed. Put props underneath or lean your knees toward each other if you want to bend knees up toward the ceiling. And again, deep breaths, just relaxing every part of your body. And just closing your eyes, following the breath, let your whole body get heavier with each breath, sinking deeper into that surface beneath you. Now, as your body grows heavy, just scan through it, finding any points of tension. A little core work today, a little hip work. Allow that whole middle torso to relax a little bit more. Relax your shoulders. We always hold tension across the chest, across the shoulders. Let it go. Soften your jaw, your chin, your face. Lower body just completely relaxing. Let the breath deepen. Let your body sink, supported by Mother Earth. Completely relax. And just allow awareness of your body to release from your attention. And as it does, other thoughts will come to your mind. It's the job of your mind to produce those thoughts. It's your choice whether you pay attention. Let the thoughts go. As each thought comes to you, just release the content, letting it float away like your breath, unneeded, unnoticed. And with each breath, just allow your awareness to focus more and more inward, drawing energy and awareness deep within, finding the peace, Filling your body with peace. Filling your mind with peace. Just peace. And as always, if you'd like to keep relaxing, feel free to do that. Or begin drawing energy and awareness back to your body, back to the room, back into the moment. Moving your body gently as you become ready, stretching and allowing everything to return to awareness. Press your back down. When you're ready, draw your knees toward your heart for your Final yoga hug of appreciation. Letting your body know you appreciate its yoga work today and the work it does every day for you. And releasing your feet to the mat, move over to the side and sit back up, coming into your preparatory position for the rest of your day. Thanks for joining me.